Hey guys, in this video, I'm hoping to expose you all to and tie together some theories on love in a fun and cool way. Not that reading theoretical texts and writing drafts and revisions for writing sim isn't cool or fun, but I'm going to try to put a new twist to it, using magic. So we'll begin with Aristophanes, a speaker at Plato's Symposium who delivered a highly fascinating speech on love. Aristophanes' theory stipulates that all humans once started out as two beings, but due to Zeus's anger at their impiety, they were separated into two. And ever since, we've been searching for our other half until we found it and became unified with it once again, an end result that we call love. So let's be more detailed about this and visualize it through magic. So the universe is a very random place. We don't know how we got here. As a matter of fact, we don't even know what's going on for the first several years of our lives. Or if you attend Princeton, make that the first 22 years of your life. But we know that Zeus has separated us from our other half, who is also somewhere in the world. And let this randomness be represented uh, by the shuffling that you see here. So what we'll do is we'll cut the deck in half, like this, and we'll stop, we'll scan through the deck, and stop with someone random, say here, stop. We'll let this card, the King of Hearts, represent us. So to make sure I'm not cheating, that there's not multiple King of Hearts in the deck, we'll label this with this sticker here, called us. So now, you see the sticker says us here. So now let's take us, flip us over, and put us somewhere in the other half of the deck. Right here. And this represents the randomness of where we were born. So for me, this, for example, would be Boston. So, now let's repeat the process for our love. We'll cut the deck in half. We'll stop at a somewhere random. Say here, stop. We'll let this, the Queen of Hearts, what a coincidence, represent our significant other. So once again, the sticker called significant other. We'll just tape it over here, just like that. So let's put that on there like that. Okay. And now we'll repeat again, flip them over, take her or him, and put them up here. So note that this person could come from anywhere. San Francisco, DC, Austin, Hopewell, New Jersey. It doesn't matter. But the point is, once we put these together to represent the whole world, there's a clear distance between the two, as you can see. Clear distance right here. Um, and according to the theory, if we push them together through the deck, they should they will look for each other until they eventually find one another. Say perhaps somewhere in the middle right here. And surely enough, what we see here, we significant other than us. We are definitely we definitely meet up together. Now that's pretty cool. But that's not all that the theory says, is it? The theory says that you two, not only will you guys meet up, but you guys will embrace and hug once you do meet up, and try to become unified in the state that you once were, in one state of unification. And surely you can see, this card is now just one. But in another theory by Roland Barthes, in his A Lover's Discourse, he makes the claim that absence of a loved one creates a desire for worldliness, increased experience, and sophistication with the outside world. It gives us an excuse to be intermittently unfaithful or to manifest our love interests elsewhere. And I quote from his book, People come over and speak to me. I feel that I am sought after, surrounded, flattered. I make the other's absence responsible for my worldliness. Now given this unfaithfulness upon separation, how is it possible that the love may ensue under Aristophanes' theory? How is it possible to resolve the contradiction between these two major works of love? So first, let's demonstrate visually what Bart is saying. So the first thing to do is to separate the two lovers once again. So here we have a significant other. Let's wave my hand over it. Let's separate them once again. So you can see, they are now separated. We'll take our significant other, in this case the Queen of Hearts, put her at the bottom of the deck, somewhere that's just far away. This absence is supposed to be creating a tension between the two according to Barts and a search for other lovers. So this might be, for example, when we, the Red King of Hearts, remember, goes to see, say, the Black Queen of Clubs, or when our lover, who was once again the Queen of Hearts, goes to see, say, for example, the Black King of Clubs. So now then, what about the original two lovers? What happens to them? To shed some light on this question, we have to introduce De Rougemont and his theory on love of love, on the love of love, excuse me. In describing the tales of Tristan and Isuit, De Rougemont states, quote, they behave as if aware 
of whatever obstructs love must ensure and consolidate it in the heart of each and intensify it infinitely. Unquote. Or in other words, distance or absence, which can be here represented by the shuffling, they're getting apart from, uh, excuse me, represented by the shuffling like they're getting apart from one another, serves as an obstacle to love. But romance abounds in obstructions, and these obstructions only serve to accentuate the love. Or more simply put, absence makes the heart grow fonder. Thus, though lovers may become more worldly and see other people, as we saw here with the queen and king of clubs, such worldliness only serves to accentuate the existing romance between the original lovers until they once again are unified, even if maybe via death, the ultimate obstruction, as suggested by Derouchemont. Well, that's it, guys. I really hope you enjoy this magic, magic trick and learn something useful about love. Please stay tuned if you want to learn how I did this trick. See you guys.